Before we see some videos, we have to understand a little bit the basic principles of this technique and the, and the rationale behind the incisions, behind the suturing and what we're looking for. So I'm going to employ some cutting edge animations in order to demonstrate a little bit more clear what we are going to do. And here we are, technology the old fashioned way. So let's suppose that this is the soft tissue margin. In the center we have our implant with no keratinized mucosa. In the uh, mesial and distal we have natural teeth, as we will see also later in some videos. Now the problem is that the, there is no keratinized mucosa on the buccal side here. So, so what we're looking for is how to generate this critical zone of 2 mm keratinized mucosa. We don't need more. We might be possible too, but I think our approach is always to go for what is essential with the minimum trouble and risk. What are the steps that we're following? First of all, we will have to make some full thickness incisions, mesial and distal, of the area that we want to create the keratinized mucosa. Try to make these full thickness incisions, including the papilla area, and without widening the incision too much, because what we want to do is now to reposition this flat uh, apically. So once your full thickness incisions are made, we're going to make a split thickness incision. So we're thinning down a very thin slice here and we are going to reposition this apically. So this portion here is going to be approximately two to three millimeters apically and this part another two to three millimeters apically and we suture and stabilize the flap in this position. So now we actually have repositioned in an apical direction or flap and we have exposed the connective tissue, the periosteum of this area. Now, now this is why it is important to include the papilla area, the buccal side, because this is where you actually have a bulk of connective tissue that can give you vascularization. This is the most important key for any soft tissue uh, intervention for any augmentation of the source tissue. The question is where will the blood come from? And in this particular case we don't have much source of blood supply. If you look at this area this is where the abutment of the implant is. There is very very thin soft tissue if at all maybe just periosteum and this is probably the areas that we might get some better bulk of vascularization. This is why I wouldn't place here a free gingival graft because if this is the only bed that we have vascularization from it might be too little to keep the free gingival graft alive. So what I'm going to place there is a combination which has an epithelial layer like a free gingival graft but it has also a segment of deeper connective tissue right apically of the epithelium lining because this is what will fix in between our split thickness flap and the connective tissue in the periosteum and will revascularize rather quickly to support the epithelialized segment. So how will our graft look like? One part, the epithelial part, is going to look like what we're trying to regenerate. So I need to have an epithelial lining that has somehow this shape and it's approximately three millimeters and this is the epithelial lining but I will harvest it together with some underlying connective tissue so that this segment is going to be going right in here it will be sutured together with my flap into this pocket I generated and it will secure that the revascularization will be quick and the whole graft will survive during the first few days of the revascularization and let's see this now in patient. 